So many of you in the audience probably assume that older adults aren't willing to use technology. And you might especially believe that they're not willing to use advanced forms of technology, such as robots. However, that assumption is wrong. It's a myth that all older adults won't accept and use new technology. In fact, one older adult participant told me, I'm appreciative of how you're moving forward with robotics. It can be helpful to humankind. It can be helpful to humankind. That is a powerful statement, and that's a statement that myself and my colleagues believe in. We also believe that older adults are accepting, surprisingly accepting, of using robotics. And we have evidence to believe that for some tasks, older adults prefer robot assistance over human assistance. But before I tell you more about that research, I'm going to tell you a personal story. I would like to introduce to you my grandma Marie and my grandma June. These two women are my inspiration. Uh, grandma Marie had to take care of my sick grandfather and had to move in with my aunt for assistance. Grandma June suffered from cognitive impairment and had to move into assisted living. So because of their experience, this made myself ask the following question. How can I help older adults? Well, my answer actually came in grad school. This is the Human Factors and Aging Laboratory. We're located in the School of Psychology here at Georgia Tech, and we are all psychologists. Now, we're not necessarily the type of psychologists that you might assume when you hear the term psychologist. We actually study something known as human factors, engineering psychology, <coughs> ergonomics. And this field of study refers to how we study people's capabilities and their limitations, and how those capabilities and limitations influence the way in which a person uses and interacts with technology. So why care about older adults? Well, the proportion of older adults is increasing worldwide. And in the United States, by the year 2050, a quarter of the population will be over the age of 60. Many of these older adults, very much like my grandmothers, want to age in their own home setting until the day they die. But with age comes changes. Uh, with age, there's changes in a person's physical capabilities, their perceptual capabilities, their cognitive capabilities, and this can make maintaining one's own home very difficult. For example, my grandma Marie had a hip replacement, and because of this hip replacement, she was unable to perform heavy household chores. She was also limited to only one floor of my aunt's house. Grandma June, as I mentioned earlier, had a cognitive impairment, and uh, she was forced to live in, uh, move into assisted living, uh, where she lived in an apartment-like setting, so she no longer had to worry about maintaining the outside of her home, uh, such as lawn care, um, and this, this made things much easier for her. So, again, how can technology help? Well, there's a lot of robots being developed that can assist, whether it's getting people in and out of bed, assisting with eating, delivering meals, mobility, cleaning, or cleaning floors, such as the Roomba, assisting with finances or bills, facilitating communication between people, delivering objects. With this advancement in technology, this has changed my question from how can I help older adults to how can robots help older adults? So this is a difficult question to answer. How can we answer this question? How do we predict the future? How do we know what older adults will accept and use in their own home setting? Well, we have a number of methodologies uh, to answer this question, which I'm going to tell you about. This field of study is called human-robot interaction. And just as the name implies, there's a human, a robot, and you study the way in which they interact. There's a lot of variables that influence human-robot interaction. There's variables related to the human such as acceptance, a person's age, their attitudes toward technology, their expectations, et cetera. There's variables related to the robot, such as adaptability of the robot's behavior, autonomy, the robot's intelligence. There's also the environment in which the robot interacts with, the tasks that the robot performs, and within that environment and within those tasks, the proximity in which the robot and the human actually interact. 
So I'm going to tell you about research that addresses a few of these variables. In particular, acceptance. So what tasks are, um, would, a, would an older adult want a robot to perform? Uh, the age of the person, attitudes toward robots, home tasks, and tasks that a robot might perform to some level of autonomy. So let me introduce to you our robot. This is uh, the PR2. And it's developed by a company called Willow Grotch. And the PR2, that stands for Personal Robot 2. At Georgia Tech, we've named our robot Gatsby, and that stands for Georgia Tech Service Bot with Interactive Intelligence. Gatsby is a certain class of robotics known as mobile manipulators. As the name implies, it means that the robot is mobile, it can move through its environment, and it can manipulate objects within its environment. The robot's arms have seven degrees of freedom, it has grippers that can grasp objects. Its base is about the size of a standard wheelchair. Um, it has a variety of sensors that allow it to move uh, and perceive through its environment. And the robot, it, it's rather tall. It, it ranges in height from 4'4 to about 5'5. Five, five. There are a lot of people working on the PR2 here at Georgia Tech. Here's um, an example of all the people uh, included on the PR2 project. And I'm going to tell you about a, a subgroup of those people. Uh, collaboration between the Human Factors and Aging Laboratory, that's the laboratory I'm a part of, and the Healthcare Robotics Laboratory. And through this collaboration, um, each of our laboratories have expertise in studying technology and humans. And through this collaboration, we're able to study human-robot interaction. So how do you answer the question, how can robots help? How can robots help older adults? Well, the best way to study this is to conduct user studies that actually involve older adults. So we had older adults view a video, very similar to what you're viewing here, that described the robot's capabilities. So older adults saw the robot navigating through its environment, picking up and moving objects, performing tasks such as pushing carts, playing billiards. Um, and this was just to give the older adults an idea of what the robot's actually capable of doing. These videos were borrowed in large part uh, with permission from the Willow Garage Vista Library. So after the older adults watched this video, we asked them the following question in a questionnaire. Imagine you need assistance in everyday life with various tasks. And here's an example of the questionnaire. And we asked about 48 home-based tasks. You can see the tasks are listed vertically. And we asked older adults to rate, if you needed assistance, would you prefer help from only a human, that's rated as a one, or only a robot, which is rated as a five? Our findings were surprising. For 28 of the 48 home tasks, older adults indicated a preference for robot assistance. And I want to repeat that, a preference for robot assistance over human assistance. So what were some of the tasks that they would like a robot to assist with? Many of the tasks they indicated had to do with cleaning their home. So things like cleaning floors or cleaning bathrooms. They also indicated they would like a robot to assist with locating and retrieving objects, such as keys or remote controls. They also indicated they would like help lifting or moving objects, particularly if those objects are heavy, such as heavy furniture or mattresses. But older adults' responses were task-specific, so let's consider uh, taking one's medication. They indicated it was okay for a robot to assist with medication delivery, so bringing the medication to them. However, they would prefer a human to assist with medication decision-making, so deciding what medication to take and what schedule in which to follow when taking that medication. Other tasks that they would prefer a human to assist with, things like personal care, so bathing, shaving, uh, they also preferred uh, human assistance with prepping meals. So this questionnaire gives us an idea of what tasks that older adults would be accepting of robot assistance, but doesn't necessarily tell us why. Why do older adults hold such a preference? So the next step was to interview older adults. Uh, and we asked older adults to indicate their perceived pros and cons to robot assistance. So to give you an idea of how we analyze this data, it's very systematic. We had their interviews transcribed verbatim. So then we had to segment the data. So in other words, what utterances were pros and what utterances were cons? We then developed a coding scheme. So this is to categorize every single pro and con. Uh, we had two uh, coders go through every single transcript and code every single pro and con. Discrepancies were then discussed, the coding scheme was revised until reliability is reached. So this is a very systematic process. 
Our findings allowed us to consider uh, some design recommendations. So if a designer is developing a robot to assist older adults, what are some things that they should pay attention to? So again, let's think about human-robot interaction. There's a human and there's the robot. So one consideration is to customize the robot's behavior. Older adults indicated that they like things done a certain way. They would like their bathroom cleaned a certain way. If a robot is prepping a meal for them, they want their vegetables prepared a certain way. So they would like to customize their robot's behavior to meet their individual preferences. Another design consideration is collaboration. So older adults were very clear that they did not want to become too dependent on the robot. So one response to this would be that the robot could perform only difficult aspects of the task, but not necessarily the entire task itself. So for example, uh, some of the older adults uh, discuss that making a bed uh, can be difficult, lifting the mattress. So if the robot could lift the mattress for them and then they tuck the sheets and make the bed, then that would be beneficial to them. Another consideration is the robot's range of motion and payload. As I mentioned before, lifting heavy objects is something that the older adults indicated was difficult, so the robot could assist with that. But also a range of motion. So if the robot could reach up high, or especially if the robot could reach down low, that would be uh, helpful for the older adults. Another consideration is size. Uh, much like an appliance, the older adults indicated if they're not using the robot, they would like to tuck it away into a closet. So going back to this collaboration between the Human Factors and Aging Laboratory, and the healthcare uh, robotics laboratory. Uh, we have all this data indicating what older adults might accept a robot to do in the home to assist them. Uh, so the next step in this iterative design process is to actually apply our findings. So let's program the robot to actually perform the tasks that older adults would want assistance with. So that's exactly what we did. And we took it even a step further. We put the robot in an actual home. This is the aware home. This is a laboratory located here at Georgia Tech, and it's a laboratory, but it's also a fully functioning home. And I'm going to show you the robot actually, uh, actually in the home setting. So you can see here, here's Gatsby navigating through the home. Uh, it's navigating into the living room. You can see the kitchen of the wear home there in the background. If you look at Gatsby's hand, you can see that the robot is carrying a medication bottle. So one thing older adults indicated that they would like is for a robot to bring medication, uh, medication bottles to them. So here the robot stopped, and I want to make a note that the robot's completely doing this autonomously. It's now scanning the environment using RFID antennas, which are located on its shoulders. Scanning the environment, and you'll see the participant, an older adult participant you'll see in just a moment, is wearing a necklace, and there's an RFID tag in that necklace. So the robot locates where the person is sitting, then autonomously navigates up to our participant. And now it's gonna autonomously hand off the medication. The older adult's gonna reach out, grab that medication bottle from the robot. <laughs> <laughs> and the robot's gonna autonomously back up, turn around and go back to its original start position. So not only are we investigating what tasks older adults would want a robot to do, we're actually implementing our findings in a home environment. So through our research, we found that robots can help older adults. And in fact, surprisingly, older adults are willing to accept robots. Again, for, for 28 of the 48 tasks that we asked, they indicated, indicated that they would prefer robot assistance over human assistance. So in closing, I'd like to introduce to you uh, your grandparents' future assistant, the domesticated robot. I hope you join me in my excitement what the future, uh, in what lies in the future of robotics.